Wolf Bride, Chapter 11, Revelations. The morning after the storm, you wake up in the fire watchtower with Bastine when you hear a familiar voice call out from below. Bastine, I know you're up there. Selena, are you okay? Bastine's lips tighten. I will take care of this. Wait here. Not a chance. Naturally, you immediately follow. Leave Morgan. Selene insisted we save you last night. You should have been content with that. Let Selene come back to town with me. She's human. She doesn't belong with your kind. There's an underlying urgency in Morgan's tone that catches your attention, but Bastine is too angry to notice. She is my kind. You feel the rising violence in both of them ready to explode. <sighs> don't I need to... Don't I get a say in this? Both of you need to back off. The whole tug-of-war thing is getting tiresome, so cut it out, both of you. Celine, you have to listen. Why? What's wrong? A look of realization and fury spreads over Bastien's face. It's Sayri, isn't it? He's planning something. Then you want to get Celine away from it. Morgan doesn't answer, but you feel the truth of it through your bond. You were trying to save me and leave the rest of the pack to die? Selene, you saw what happened on the full moon. They're monsters. Bastine growls, and through your bond, you feel the surge of his temper as it ro reaches a boiling point. You want a monster? Fine. The primal magic fills him, blinding your senses as he shifts fury, turned to flesh. Really? <sighs> you know what? Fine. Go ahead and fight. I'm just done with it. I guess this has been a long time coming. Just get it out of your systems. Might as well. Morgan seems as eager for violence as Bastine. Her anger courses her as she puts up her fists. Come on, then. You gasp as Bastine swings a claw fist at Morgan, but to your surprise, Morgan knocks the blow away. How did she... What? I've been saying this for chapters now. <clears throat> Bastien seems momentarily stunned, but bares his teeth and tries to strike again. They dodge and parry in a flash of blows that grow too fast for you to see. You feel Morgan's anger rise, the events of the past few days flooding her with rage. The loss of her cab and the loss of her father's trust. The shocking, unnatural strength, Morgan drives a fist into Bastien's gut, sending him stumbling backwards. And then you feel it, a drawing, pulling sensation coming from the earth, a surge of primal magic. Morgan, you're... She's too angry to hear. She lands a blow to Bastine's jaw that feels like a concussion shock reverberating through your bond with each of them. And you know, without a doubt, it can only come from one source. You won't take anything else from me! The blow drives Bastine to his knees, one clawed hand touches his lip and comes away bloody. He stares down at his own blood in confusion, as slowly his yellow eyes lift to Morgan's. I see. He shifts back to human form in the blink of an eye. You're... of the pack. What? No! That... that wasn't human, Morgan. Sure as hell wasn't vampire, I tell you that. Morgan puts her fists back up, the drum beat of her pulse still thudding across your bond. Meanwhile, Bastine's rage has been doused, leaving only the confusion in its wake. I feel the primal magic in you. I feel it too, Morgan. No, that's not possible! She runs a Bastine, striking him wildly with bare fists, but he only catches her hands and holds them still. Fight back, you coward! You swallow hard, hearing the angry tears in Morgan's voice. I will not fight one of my own. I am not one of you! Morgan, maybe there's another explanation. There is not. But she doesn't shift like the rest of you. And neither do you. Morgan takes a deep, shuddering breath. She yanks herself free from Bastion and lets her go easily, still stunned. How is this possible? You have... Been one of us this entire time. No, it's not true. It can't be. Morgan turns and flees back into the woods, stumbling in her haste to get away. Morgan, wait. But she doesn't even slow down. You and Bastien share a look about her shock. He stares in wonderment at the blood on his hand through the wound on his face has already started healing. Do you think she's Wolfkin? She is more than kin. I can feel her now. She is of our bloodline. 
How could she have been lost to us? Do you want to go talk to her? Passing shakes his head sadly. I am the last person Morgan will want to see right now. You should go to her. She trusts you. I don't know. She didn't seem like she wanted to hear what either of us were saying. Please, Celine, go to her now. Help her understand what she is. The pack is a family. We cannot lose her again. Diamond choice. Follow Morgan. You chase after Morgan, who has already disappeared from sight. Morgan! Unfortunately, you pick up her scent on the wind and can easily follow the path she took. This way. You finally catch up to her back at the research station, which is filled with wet branches, debris, the fallout from last night's flood. Morgan is near tears, shoulders slumped as she stands before the sodden remains of her life's work. Lean. She doesn't seem surprised to hear you coming. What? I'm here. Thunderhoof scampers over, nuzzling against your ankles like a cat. You're back! Uh, the old river had nothing on me. It was bad. I go wet. Uh, I'm glad you're okay, Thunderhoof. I wasn't scared. I'm not scared of nothing. Want to see a werewolf? No! Okay, exactly. You reach down and stroke him behind his downy ears, and he settles against you, little head laid trustingly across your feet. I can feel how wet it is. The whole place smells like a swamp. Is any of it salvageable, or is it all ruined? You, you look at all the soaked papers and equipment and shake your head sadly. This will maybe be impossible to salvage. It's all gone. Morgan... Is that really what you're upset about? She's silent, but you can feel the twist of acute misery within her. Will, will you help me clean this up? See if there's anything I can still use? Of course. You sort through the waterlogged bits of Morgan's life, narrating what you see. The computers are gone, there's recorders too, probably. Maybe you could try and dry out the biology samples? Morgan sighs deeply, feeling the samples between her fingers as you hand them. Morgan... Do you have any backup copies? All the data and werewolves is backed up at the SAP offices. This was mostly my own. My notes over the year, my dictated reports, journals, all my work, years of life. You hand her another pile of sodden folders, and she tosses them down in frustration. None of it matters. The important things are safe, at, la at least. This was important to you, though. Thunderhoof helps you nose through the debris, sniffing biological samples, and then being cursely at the edge of some papers. He wrinkles his nose. Teeth behind my mind. Uh, it's not for eating, sweetie. Don't worry, I, can st I can't still help. Thunderhoof starts nudging some unidentifiable, soggy debris out of the station. Morgan is silent for a long moment, just as you wonder if she is ever going to address the elephant or the werewolf in the room. Bastien is wrong. I'm human. I have to be human. I think that you've known for a while. Your love for the forest, the way you can smell and hear. Didn't part of you always know you were something special? She stands and paces the room, restlessly trying to wipe water and mud from the equipment. Maybe you're right. Maybe I have been denied it. But if I'm a werewolf, what happened to me? Why was I abandoned? Her face suddenly falls again. Or was I stolen? Did my daddy know when I, what I was when he took me? Morgan, there's only one way to find out. These are all questions you should be asking Sari. Her eyes fill with tears. Oh God, how am I going to tell my father that I'm one of the monsters he hates? He probably already knows. You put a tentative hand on hers trying to offer some comfort. Thunderhoof totters over to you both, resting his head on her lap. Morgan cards her fingers through Thunderhoof's fur idly. Oh, you should scratch her ears. At least it makes me feel better. Thunderhoof cranes his neck and nuzzles at Morgan's ear. Morgan sniffles and laughs softly. Hey, that tickles. Maybe you need to need to talk to the back first. Learn who they really are, who you are. No, I could never. 
They hate me. They should hate me. I have nowhere, no one. Uh, what am I gonna do now? A hug. You pull her into your arms, hold her tight as she shakes with silence all of your heartaches and concert. It'll be okay. I know it doesn't seem that way now, but trust me, as someone who's gone through a similar revelation recently, you don't have to go through this alone. I'll help. Thank you, Celine. That makes me feel better. It really does. Thunder of Flicks Morgan's hand encouragingly. Eh. Thank you, too, hun Thunderhoof. She takes a deep, steadying breath. You should get back to Bastine. But what will you do? I don't know. I don't know where I can go, but I'll find you when I figured it out, I promise. Later. You arrive back at the den before Bastine and just have time to change your pack clothes when Jet sees you. Where have you been? That's none of your business. He blocks your path, and as you grit your teeth and try to go around, he sniffs the air with disdain. You smell of humans. The last I saw of her, she was with the hunter, the one who shot me with silver. She was with them? I don't know who the hell you are, but shut up. I was with Bastine. You hold your head up proudly, looking Isabel in the eye. He helped me find my connection to the primal magic. But instead of pride or approval, you hear outrage and the murmurs from the pack. You quickly, you're quickly surrounded and desperately you search for a friendly face in the crowd. Layla steps forward, Callum at her side. Hey now, let's all calm down. Celine's one of us. Bastine gave her free passage to come and go as she pleases. Bastine is blind to what she truly is. She is our- he is our Alpha. Do not question him. She made it clear she sides with the humans, with the Knights of Osiri. Voices rise against you, and you shrink back in a little fear. No, she's participated in our rituals with true respect. Remember what we saw? She has a connection to the primal magic. Others nod and murmur their assent, and you feel some relief for the company of your defense. Jet Isabella, you saw how she helped us at the stream. That is true. She let the humans get away with it. She helped purify the waters. She showed that she was loyal. You all have seen how hard she's trying to fit in here. The only reason Morgan shot you, Isabella, is that I was trying to get Layla to the hospital when you attacked us. I know you were under the influence of the full moon, but my concern that night was for Layla and her baby. The Pax baby. I... Yep, it's true. Without Celine, our child would have not have survived. Isabel is either too shocked or too angry to reply, but you know you're right. You pull the primal magic into you, drawing yourself up to full height, eyes blazing at Jet. So what exactly are you trying to accuse me of, Jet? Oh. Layla falls back, lowers her eyes, the strength of your presence overwhelming her. You lock eyes with Jet, daring him to take you on, and he too is too strong to be intimidated by you. But you know he senses your power. How are you? Will you tell me I'm not the of the pack? That I'm still human despite everything? Both Isabel and Jet seem unsure now. The tension is broke as Naomi arrives. The gathered werewolves part for her. Hmm. Something has changed about you, Celine. She circles you appraisingly and then stops, looking at you with new understanding. I recognize the scent of primal magic on you. It has grown since we last spoke. Is it possible that you may be one of us in your own right? Isabel sputters angrily. But honored mother, she is only Wolfkin. Even if she's bonded to Bastille, she has no claim on the pack until she bears a pup. Naomi turns to you, her eyes dark pools of wisdom that see right through you. Well, Celine, do you feel the prim primal magic as we do? Can you claim full membership in pack? Call the primal magic to unlock your diamond choice. You glare defiantly at Isabel and Jet. Mm. I have been to the heart of the primal magic. You what? 
You smile at her indictation. My connection to the primal magic is as strong as yours, Isabel. I have seen the Harn and sacred caves and been accepted there. A tingle of primal magic moves through you. And from your head to your fingertips to your toes, intrigued members of the pack come to you. Humans and wolves together sniffing you. Naomi shifts to her wolf form and then back, examining you thoroughly. Finally, she smiles and turns to the others. It is true. Selene is a wolf bride. She may not be able to shift forms yet, but she is already more than Wolfkin. She addresses you with warm, kind eyes. And she is to be treated as a full member of the pack. Whoa, cool. Layla is the first to react to the announcement. With a grin, she hugs you tightly against her protruding belly. Welcome to the family, sister. Welcome home, Selene. Isabel approaches, and you stand tall in her presence, not looking away. I accept the proclamation of the speaker. As a member of the pack, you will submit to those who lead it. Which is Bastine, now piss off. <clears throat> it's not a question, but you answer it anyway. I will. To your surprise, she offers a handshake. You take it, and she pulls you into what must look like a friendly embrace, and she whispers in your ear like the sinister bitch she is. I'll be watching you closely. Do not step a toe out of line. Wolf Brider nod. You must answer for your actions. You, why did you leave a night of osery after she attacked Isabel? I told you, Isabella wasn't in her right mind. She would have killed Layla and her baby. And let alone her. Morgan helped me save their lives. Jet turns to Isabel for backup, but she refuses to meet his gaze and remains silent. Jet scowls as one by one of the members pack come to you, welcoming you in words and glances. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. A warmth grows inside you, a sense of belonging like you've never felt anywhere else. Uh, let me know what that feels like. Don't know really what that ever felt like. You acquired pack status. Is that really a superpower? Really? <laughs> they kind of ran out of powers at this point. Bastine does not return until nightfall. He sniffs sharply when he sees you. And if uh, something has changed about your scent. Did something happen here? They accepted me. The speaker in the pack. They accepted uh, me as one of you. And indeed you are. He puts his hands on your shoulders and smiles. But you read the wariness behind his gaze. Bastine... I thought you'd be happier for me. What's wrong? He sits down heavily, smiling, but still, you can still sense his distraction. You've been gone all day. What have you been doing? You lead him to sit by the fire and begin kneading the knots of his muscles and his shoulders. Oh, oh, you know, this whole time that he hasn't been, like, pursuing us, we've been like, no, get away! And then, you know, like, right when he's, like, not home on time, it's like, honey, where you been? Like, what the f*** is going on? I've been trying to find out who Morgan really is. I cannot understand how someone with no connection to the pack, nor even a wolfkin family, could touch the primal magic. <clears throat> Morgan is a mystery. Aston uh, groans, resting his head in his hands. One that sets my head to spinning. Morgan is personally responsible for the deaths of at least three pack members that we know of, and the disappearances of many others. Their lives were irreplaceable. Their losses are still felt. If she was a member of the pack, that would be cause enough for execution, so why? He rubs a frustrated hand over his face. Why did I spare her? He hands. He still. He steals her hand. Sorrowful eyes meeting yours. I tell myself her death would be more than justified by what she's done, but I could not bring myself to do it. Literally or figuratively. Listen, she was besting you, okay? You did the right thing. She deserves to learn who she is. Does she? Whatever her upbringing or excuse, her crimes are unforgivable. Mmm. <laughs> Maybe. I'm, I'm floaty on that one. Bastine. The pack has wronged Morgan, too. She survived a werewolf attack as a child. Her home was destroyed. Maybe you didn't kill her because on some level you understand that she had a reason for what she did. You feel his anger well up at that, his mouth twisting. Mm. So, what happens now? 
for the time being. I'm not sure. He looks at you suddenly, an idea forming. <sighs> Selene, come with me. Let us take an offering to the Earth to help me decide what path I must take. But I've never done anything like that before. I would appreciate your guidance. You help me see things from angles I would have never considered. And you can ask the spirits of the Earth for assistance as well with any dilemma that might be weighing on you. Diamond choice. Diamond choice. Well, when you put it that way... Follow Bastien through the dark woods. There have been occasions where the pack has found lost wolfkin families like yours who leave and do not tell the children who they are. The moon illuminates the grim set of his mouth. But I have never heard of a lost werewolf. What I sense from Morgan is stronger than wolfkin, but less than a full werewolf. I cannot imagine where she came from. I'm not sure. She was abandoned as a child. In the forest of all places, but she doesn't know the circumstances. Who would abandon a helpless child like that? Silence overtakes you both after a long moment. Bastien speaks again. I know I should ask Naomi. If anyone remembers Morgan, it would be her. But I admit I am somewhat afraid to hear the answer. I didn't think you were afraid of anything. He flashes you a grim smile. It is my responsibility as Alpha to know everything about the pack. If I was not told of this, I cannot fathom the reason, but it must be terrible, indeed. Why else would something of this nature be kept from me? Have I failed in my duty by not knowing? I mean, if you don't know something, right? You didn't really fail in your duty because you weren't told. The people who put you in that place and kept that secret away from you, that's on them. You didn't do anything wrong. Morgan is as old as you are, maybe older. How can anyone fault you for something that happened when you were a baby? A muscle works in his jaw. A proper alpha would know if one of his pack was missing. Really? You sure as shit didn't know I was missing where I was. Reach a sacred grove where a circle of trees parked to reveal a moonlit clearing. You're not sure if it's because your visit to the sacred cave changed your vision, but the very air here seems to sparkle with obvious magic. You must think you see faces among the trunks and branches. You should see them at the tree outside my house. It literally has a face on it. It's kind of cool. Stay here a moment. I must find an offering for the spirits. His eyes go golden in the moonlight as he shrinks into the form of the great black wolf. When he returns, he's carrying a dead rabbit in his jaws. He lays it down in the moonlight and then shifts back. Spirits of the Earth, accept this offering. Grant me your guidance. Would they accept, like, a fresh, like, non-killed rabbit? I'll pray with him. I am one of the pack, after all, you know. You close your eyes and place a hand on Bastine's back, letting him know you're right here with him. Please help Bastien find some peace, release him from the guilt that burdens him, and give him the answers that he seeks. Eyes still closed, Bastien nods to you. If there are any questions that weigh on you, you may ask the spirits for guidance as well. Do I just talk to them? Offer something of value to the Earth, and then ask your question. Um, so spirits, I don't have anything to offer right now. Will you take an IOU? The wind whistles through the trees, making you shiver. D just kidding. A little uncomfortably, you offer up your prayers. Spirits of the Earth, please tell me. Hmm. No, the Bastien or Morgan one, that's stupid. That's like saying, hey God, tell me. Should today I actually continue living or not? Like, seriously, like... Um... Mm, full werewolf, I think that's our choice. Morgan is like me, neither wolf. Yeah, we'll ask about Morgan. It would be really nice to know if I'm not alone in being the super weird once-in-a-generation thing. Suddenly a moth lands silently on the back of your hand. 
you admire it for a moment before it flitters away. You wait for something more, but hear only the sounds of night. Yeah, nature is just as cryptic as God, I'm just saying. Is that it? The trees rustle, their sounds almost not quite recognizable words. I want some answers. More like you need them. Besides, your bastion opens his eyes. They are golden with magic now, although you sense no intention to shift. The spirits do not answer in words, Selene. They only help us find the answers we knew all along, but could not admit it. You close your eyes and listening to the rustling leaves, feeling the certainty settling inside of you. Morgan isn't like you. Bastion's response, what he sensed in her, was too different. If she was Wolfkin, he would know. You open your eyes, surprised to find Bastion still watching you. Did, did the spirits answer you? As I said, they only gave me what I knew all along. So, you know what happened to Morgan? No, but I will find out tomorrow. I'll ask Naomi. And if Morgan is of the pack, she must be given a place in it, and uh, find a way to atone for her crimes. Even after everything she's done, you still accept her. There are far too few of us in the world to afford losing even one. If there is a wolf soul within Morgan, I will must fail to find it. Mm. What if the pack won't accept her? I mean, it's not like they welcome me with open arms. I don't expect Isabella Jet to accept her easily. Okay, what did I do to him then? I didn't shoot him. If Morgan truly wishes to join us, she must find her own way to prove her loyalty. Follow Bastien as he pads aimlessly through the trees. I must apologize, Celine. I have treated Morgan with too much suspicion. That's an understand understandable. I treated her as an enemy. I hated her for her interest in you. But now I understand. It was her werewolf blood manifesting, and you were drawn to her because somehow you sensed it. While I did not. I mean, I guess it's definitely been something drawing us together. You know her better than I do. I will accept your judgment on her character. Asteen turns from you, tilting your head to the sky. Thank you, spirits of the earth, for bringing Celine back to her home and into my life. To your surprise, you feel your eyes prick with tears as the moon looks back down upon you. Both like a far away and benevolent, benevolent parent. Before you, Selene, I would not have hesitated to kill Morgan. But because of you, I was able to realize she was of the pack. He pulls you into a hug. Whether you will realize it or not, you have made me a better alpha. Mm, I kiss him. You slide your fingers around the back of his neck and tug him to him. His lips shape a smile beneath yours. What's so funny? Not a thing, my love. Mm hmm. Say that again. He eases you down on the soft moss, hand cradling the back of your head, his mouth chasing yours. Celine, I adore you. He kisses your lips, the crook of your neck, and you feel a surge of desire mirrored immediately in him. Is it uh, blasphemous to do this here? On the contrary, this is a place of worship. And he's gonna worship that booty. He drops kisses along the length of your arm, taking the tip of your finger between his lips. It is entirely appropriate place for me to worship you. Called it. Oh. Maybe keep your worship for the spirits. Don't want me to make any enemies out here. Just kiss me for a while, okay? He smiles and obliges you warmly, pressing yours open. Tongue languid languorously exploring your mouth. Happily. You cuddle with Bastion in the grove. Yeah, not everything has to be a quick bounce chicka wow wow. We're just gaining our footing in the pack, okay? He presses you against the downy earth, the sound of crickets filling the air, and his body warming you against the chill breeze. You are lost to the sweet pleasure of his touch, kissing him endlessly until you both attire. You feel his deep love for you echoing through your bond, and all is right with the world. A blast of chill wind blows through the clearing, rustling the leaves, making you shiver unpleasantly. Bastine wraps his arms around you, warming you with his body. Thank you for coming here, Selene. Your counsel was wise, as I knew it would be. Happy to give you my opinions any day of the week. 
Did the spirits ever answer your question? Yes, no. Like I said, they only gave me what I already am struggling not to admit. Indeed. When we look inside ourselves, it is surprising how often we already know the truth we're looking for. I mean, it's possible she's just a werewolf, right? Like, she's not able to see the moon, so that's why she's not able to shift, right? Because she's not able to see the moon. Hand in hand, you begin the slow walk back to the den. Or she could be something else, I don't know. The next morning... Bastine takes a deep breath as the two of you approach Naomi. He squeezes your fingers, and you know he's worried about the secrets she may reveal. On and mother, I need to know the truth. Okay, you could be a little less, um... You know... I don't know, not storming in and demanding an answer? Naomi looks at him calmly, and it's impossible to tell if she already knows the question he is there to ask. There are many truths. How could a knight of Ostery have packed blood? Do you know who Morgan is? Is she one of us? You're almost like, you know, Neo demanding answers from the Oracle. Know thyself. The lines in Naomi's face seem to deepen as she sighs and runs a hand through her white hair. Morgan is... your sister. What? How is that even possible? I have no sister. She was born two years before you. A full moon night in February. Your father's mate tried to get help to get to town, but there was no one who could help her. She died, and the baby was born wrong, sickly, blind. Passing's mouth falls open, thunderstruck and speechless. You reach for him as he reels back his world upending. Poor Morgan... So, because she was born sick and blind, the pack outed her. Wow. His eyes go dark, his rage feels him a roar booming from his chest. How could I not know all these years, all this time? Your father took another mate. Your mother. We all assumed the infant had died. There was no reason to suspect that anyone had taken her. Why was Morgan abandoned? Just because she was blind? You left her to die? It is the way. No, it is not the way. The pack cannot support a child that will never be able to care for itself. We, if we knew an infant will not survive, it is best to let it die quickly. Well, that's backwards. It doesn't happen often, Celine, but... You knew you knew the pack did this? What happened to every child is precious. It is a mercy for those that would die anyway. Morgan didn't die. She's one of the strongest people I know. You glare at them both, trying to reconcile the love you know that they feel for the pack with this callous disregard for its weakest members. Bastine looks away. Hey, guess what, folks? Society, human society, does the same. You want to know why? I'll be glad to tell you sometime. Maybe at the end of the video. Perhaps we have not considered what might happen if these infants could live. Sebastian opens his mouth to speak, suddenly Jet bursts through the trees. Look who I found sneaking around in our territory. He drags someone behind him. Put me down. Morgan. Sari's pet spy, we have you now. I wasn't spying, I swear. I didn't mean any harm, especially after what I just overheard. What did she over here? Morgan is Bastien's sister. If she had not been abandoned by the pack, she would have been our alpha. No, that's not possible. It is. No. In his fury, Jet surges into his primal form, his pointed ears brushing the lower branches of the tree. She is not one of us! He grabs Morgan with a great clawed paw, Mm, I'm gonna let Morgan stand up for herself, because she actually handed Bastine. Get your hands off of me. You bite your lip, knowing that Morgan is going to have to prove herself to the pack. You have to stand on her own two feet. Jet doesn't let go, and you sense the swell of primal magic as Morgan instinctively draws it to defend herself. I said let go. Morgan knocks Jet's hand free with a supernatural strength. 
and Jet goes slack jawed in astonishment. Restrain yourself, Jet. As the speaker's quiet anger, Jet checks himself, snarling as he manages to pull himself back to human form. You forget your place, Jet. It is my duty to punish, not yours. Morgan is of the pack, child of our Alpha, just as Bastine is. This is why you felt her presence at the bonding, Selene. You are bonded to the pack, Alpha, and because Morgan lived. The ritual bonded me both to, to the both of them at the same time? You and Bastine stare at each other in shock while Morgan's uh, mouth hangs open. This is why I've been lusting. I mean, what? That's why I always know where to find you. This is crazy. Has this ever happened before? I don't know. You don't know a lot of goddamn things because people hold shit back from you, apparently. He turns to Morgan, barely keeping his bristling anger in check. You wish to challenge me for Alpha? No, no. I just... I only came to... Face falls and she looks to you for support. She just wants to find out who she is. But before anyone can answer, you hear the sudden terrible sound of diesel engines and massive truck tires cutting through the quiet of the forest. God damn it, Sayri. Five minutes, man. Five minutes before we have another shitstorm. Everyone rushes towards the sound of near horror. You see a fleet of SEP vehicles. A veritable army of Knights of Osri have you surrounded on all sides. No, oh no. How did they find us? Sayri jumps out of the passenger door to lead vehicle, approaching you with a nervous joy. Oh, so kind of you to lead us straight to the den, Morgan. Uh, when her back is against the wall, what side will she choose? Without further ado, thanks for watching. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Head to the description below, links to social media, discord, and if you like to support me and my content. I need your support more than ever. That's all I'm going to say for right now. There will be a video coming out soon. Um, as for why. As for what I just said at the uh, video in regards to the pack abandoning Morgan because she was blind. Listen, okay? Oh, I've been on this planet way too goddamn long. I'm tired of you humans. That's what I'm saying. Um, so this is why. Okay, so a lot of you don't know me, right? Uh, clearly. Because, you know, um, if that was the case, we'd be talking um, on more than just uh, you listening at the end of a video, right? So... Um, you know, I have two special needs brothers I've had in my life since, uh, well, basically they were born. I've helped raise them, right? I've taken care of them and everything else, okay? So the one is uh, unable to walk, right? He is 100% disabled. He will never walk his whole entire life, and he's ne he has never walked, okay? All right, so the federal government, right? It's a thing. And basically, we have a program, right, for healthcare and all that jazz that says, hey, if you need help and you're unable to earn money or whatnot or come from a low-income family, we will certainly assist you, okay? All right. Well, that seems to be the case with my family, right? Okay. Well, we applied to get him a wheelchair, and basically, after numerous appeals, they said that basically it wasn't, they, they didn't see it necessary or needed, okay? So, yeah. I've been talking about this, by the way, since before Choices was even a thing, and no one has given a crap. I did a GoFundMe for getting my brother a wheelchair. No one gave a crap, okay? Literally and figuratively, I've been talking about this for a while, okay? I've been talking about this because of my own health concerns and health issues, and no one gave a crap. So, my point still stands. No one gives a crap at the end of the day, okay? I want you to know this. And this is why I say, like the wolf pack, you may right now be going, oh, that sounds horrible, but society does it too, okay? Like, we want you to bring babies into the world, right? But once they're born, we won't help you raise them. We won't help you take care of them, especially if shit happens, right? People lose their jobs every day. People get them down with mysterious illnesses. Hi, I'm one of them. And people have shit happen to them every single goddamn day, okay? Like, people get cancer. They get nerve damage. Like, shit happens every day to people, and yet we don't seem to care, and I'm talking to all 8 billion of you, okay? There's a lot of you, like I would say 95% of the world just doesn't care, and a lot of you will be going, well, I got problems of my own. Really? Can you walk? Can you talk? 
Can you breathe on your own without, you know, needing medical instruments or whatnot? So unless you literally have problems like that, like you may think right now, oh, I got one arm, but at least I got two legs and an arm, right? Well, you know, because I'm lacking one arm, I should just not care about anybody else. No, okay? That is my vision for this community. That's my vision for the world, where we should all be actually giving a crap about our fellow human being, not just being selfish and being like, well, you know, I got problems of my own. I don't care. You know what? I've had problems of my own, okay? If you ever want to sit down and hash it out and, li and I'll listen to your problems and then you can listen to mine, I will more than lovingly do that, okay? But long story short, everyone's got their own shit going on and we need to support one another. It's not that goddamn hard, but I digress. Then once again, thank you all for listening. Hopefully you did. Otherwise, you probably abandoned the video and you're not. So you've completely missed this life lesson of today, especially the day after Christmas. All of you probably enjoyed your Christmas. I hope you did. But basically, I didn't even have a Christmas. Haven't had a Thanksgiving meal in two years. Haven't had a Christmas meal in just as long. So, see my point? Okay? Like, I got two special needs brothers to take care of. Money is not a thing, and neither is gifts. Like, I literally had to sacrifice to get them what little I could because of my issues that I have. So, that being said, thanks again for listening. Peace.